am Andrew Bournes. Uh, I live in Wellington, Florida, and I produce and compete top-level show jumping horses. So we have a predominantly family-run business. We buy young horses in Europe. We produce them in Ireland. I have a full team of people in Ireland and in Europe that produce the horses. And when they're ready and they're of age and they have enough experience, they come to America. Uh, then we showcase them here. We train them a little further, compete them here, and then sell them here. We specialize in two areas. Uh, one is for amateur riders, but we would sell from meter 30 to meter 40, the higher end amateur horses and then it, we also sell and have sold a lot of five-star FEI Grand Prix horses. We really look out for any horses. That are, horses can be sharp but we don't want ones that are habitually spooky. For the amateur horse we need them brave and they need to be able to be understanding to the rider. So if the rider makes a little mistake or if things don't go according to plan the horse will keep going and they'll come out the next day and then they'll try again. Uh, a lot of times with a very high caliber competition horse, they tend to be very unforgiving towards the rider. So if the rider makes a mistake, it's really not that long before the horse figures it out and you now have a problem. And then we also have so some uh, five-star, very, very top-end Grand Prix horses too, but that's a completely different type of buyer. In America, the system is quite different to Europe in that most amateur clients work with a trainer. Uh, it's a very good system and works extremely well and it means the buying process is much safer for the client and a lot less likely to go wrong because there's somebody with experience, a professional there helping them to make the decisions. It's also easier for me too because that trainer has already spent years building a trust relationship with the client. They only, sometimes they only just met me so it's not, they won't necessarily believe what I tell them because I, don't, I haven't built a relationship with them, whereas the trainer has. So as a seller and as a professional, it sometimes works much easier to work with the professional. They will try the horse once, maybe two times. They'll vet the horse. And they, we look at the records. We look at old videos. We look at what the horse has done. We try to suit the correct rider for the correct horse and in doing so we, we have a pretty good success rate. I think today we'll look at a new horse, a nine-year-old mare by Dirado. Her name is Disa DM. I think she's interesting for you guys to see because we just imported her. Uh, she's only out of quarantine just two or three weeks now at this point. She competed at her first show last week so she's very much on track and right where we want her. A couple of things I'll show you today is when they come from Europe, they tend to ride a certain way. I like to train the horses to be a little more responsive and to be a little more self-reliant, so to carry themselves. And I work very much on their balance and on their control. The reason for that is when an amateur client gets on the horse, uh, they need to feel in control. They need to feel that the horse has got its balance right and then the horse knows what it's doing. Um, and I find if we can get the horse off of listen to my hand and listen to my leg correctly at the beginning when we go to sell the horse it's a much higher likely uh, chance of success uh, for the new owner. As we already discussed nine-year-old mare by Dirado. She's uh, recently arrived in America. She, we bought her in Sweden as a five-year-old at the Indoor Young Horse Championships in Flinge. Um, since then she was produced in Ireland uh, by my team in Ireland with Joanne Blair and my dad and actually uh, Ethan Ahern and Camilla Spears produced her uh, as she got a little older in her seven-year-old year and she was very successful there. Uh, so now she's nine, she's ready to come to America and ready to basically finish her training uh, as far as we're concerned and, and be ready to be sold to an amateur rider. She, for me, she's, she's the perfect type to, to work with for uh, an amateur rider that wants to move up from the meter 30 up to the meter 40 level, which is a very big market here in America. We call it from the medium amateurs up to the high amateurs. She's uh, perfect for that because she's very rideable, uh, very brave and uh, easy to work with and quite understanding. Basically, when they, when they come from Europe, 
uh, they, they tend to ride a little heavier and a little stronger in Europe than maybe some of the uh, American riders ride. So uh, my first focus is to make them a little lighter off of my aids, make them a little more responsive, and then at the very end really uh, make them have good balance so that a less experienced rider can, can get on them uh, and ride them easily and, and compete up to a level that they want to achieve, uh, maybe with not the most experience, so that the horse can do a lot more of the work for them. Um, at the end of the day, that's, that's our goal. Now, most amateur riders don't have the same kind of leg or the same strength in their hand or their seat that I do, uh, but I believe through just a very classical training and very consistent training system, uh, I can make the horses more responsive from my hand and more responsive from my leg therein in the end, making them nicer and easier to ride for someone with less experience. Sorry to interrupt, but if you're enjoying the content here on Horse World TV, then become a member and get instant access to hundreds of videos. We cover a variety of topics and disciplines, all horse related. So if you're interested, join now and access all the playlists and all the videos straight away. Uh, and it starts in the warm up, right from the very beginning. Uh, just in the walk, we can start with something simple like letting go of the contact so that they walk on a loose contact and then we take the contact back again. As we take the contact back, we maintain the leg so that straight away you can see this mare's quite easy. Her natural reaction is to come into a nice contact and then we let it go. Very, very simple start off, loose contact. I, I, I'm not doing anything particular and then I just nicely take the contact back again. But as I do, I support it with a little leg and make sure that her pace doesn't change her frame just changes. So she comes from an open frame into a closed frame. Let it go again. Normal, no pressure. She carries herself quite nicely. She's very easy to work with, amicable. I take the contact back and there she is. So uh, next step is a couple of transitions. Um, one of the most important things for a show jumping horse to do is a half halt. And for me, the best way to start with a half halt is to actually start with a full halt. Um, you can do it from the walk even. So the difference between a half halt and a full halt is the same idea, the same principle. You just keep holding until they come to the halt. So I start with my leg a little and then resist with my hand. I keep the pressure applied until they come to a halt. Now I walk forward again. And then I want one more halt. We keep a little leg support, just same as a half halt. But instead of a half halt where we would let go, I just keep holding until she comes to a full halt. And now try it. So for the upper transition, we want her to be nice and responsive from her leg. And we want her to go forward into a forward working trot straight away so that she has good cadence and now she's carrying herself. Again, she's making life very easy for me because if I drop my contact, she maintains the trot quite well. She just goes into a slightly more open frame, take the contact back, resist a little, and that's enough frame. For me, I never want the horse's head to come in past the vertical. You always want it about four to six degrees in front of the vertical. As soon as I come in too far, she starts to suck back behind my leg. And actually, a horse that is in too much of a frame, you have less control over than one that is closer to the vertical. I now have all the control I need. So we'll start with some walk trot transitions and walk. Now, that time she fell a little behind my leg in the downward transition, so I ask her to do it again. And trot forward. Now this time I'm gonna sit, keep a little more leg, and just a little resistance with my hand. What we try and teach the horse to do is to do less for more. So we want the horse, or do more with less aid. So we want the horse 
to try harder and less effort from us. And try. So as she trots, we want a nice forward cadence. I start with a little lag and then I take it off so she carries herself. And now we transition back to a wall. See that? There. And you'll notice I do the transitions quite regularly. Transitions are a cornerstone to good flat work, I think at any level, at any discipline for a horse. And by improving the transitions, we improve the responsiveness of the horse, we improve how they respond to our hand, and we improve how they respond to our leg. Through something very simple and very easy for the horse to understand. So this is all warm up. This is warm up every day that I go through on pretty much every horse that I ride. Nice transition to walk and trot. Now we want her to trot forward and be like, the more times we do these transitions, the better she starts to respond from her leg, the better she starts to respond from her hand. And we start out each day with these transitions. Next transition I'm gonna do, we're gonna go directly from a trot to a halt. Again, we're going back to the half halt practice. Half halt is a very important part of what we do. If we get the half halt right, she becomes easier to ride in the ring. I'll come through the diagonal and halt. So not the best halt, but she listened. She did what I asked her to do. And nice and light off my leg. The more times we do this, the more responsive she gets off of my leg. And halt. And I wait. There, thank you. And trot forward. Again, I already started with a horse that has a good attitude, a good work ethic in this horse. So really all we're doing is fine tuning her so that she is responsive to all my leg aids and my hand aids. So that when her future owner comes to try her, they feel like they're in control and they feel like she's nice and responsive and light to her aids without any fear, without any pressure, without any tension. Good girl. Wait there. And forward. This is the kind of start that anyone can do on any horse and it will improve them over time. Just by starting with the basics and at the end of the day, the basics are key. And, hold. and wait. Good girl. And drop on. Now what we can work on, we can actually try a little half halt. We've been working on our halts. And the difference between a half halt and a full halt is in the full halt, I just maintained the pressure. And then she came to a halt. This time, apply and release. Good, good girl. Again, apply and release. So there's your half halt. Uh, again, Something very basic, very easy way to start with your horse in the morning. Now the horse is listening to my leg, listening to my hand. All the other training we go to do is going to be easy after this one because she's already focused, listening to me quite like. I'm going to walk for a minute. Now I'll move, progress to a little lateral work. Keep it pretty simple. You start with a little shoulder in along the long side. Just in the walk. So, in the shoulder in, be careful not to overdo the lateral movement and focus a little more on the flexion through the neck. Good. And we change rein. I like to start with the shoulder in. I like lateral work for producing show jumpers. If nothing else, it teaches them to go forward from your leg into your hand. For show jumping, our end goal is not the lateral movement. Our end goal is straightness. 
So we work on the lateral movements. So when it comes time to go, when it comes time to do some more serious work, the horse is moving laterally off of our aids and is straight. Good girl. One more time. This time, we'll do some half pass. So we just want her to move a little off of my left leg. Good girl. There. And back the other way. Focus on the left bend and the right leg back. And then my left leg stays on the girth as well. So now I have a horse that's off of my leg forwards and backwards. She's listening to my hand correctly for breaks. She's listening to my lateral aids. It took about five minutes. Now I have a horse that's ready to go warmed up and to actually start some serious work. I'll start in the trot. I'm just gonna do a figure of eight to start. Sometimes a really nice, perfectly executed figure of eight it can be hard for some people to do. Focus on the shape of each circle. For me, I like to do one little straight bit in the middle. Good. And now along this long side, I'll start with just a slight, a little shoulder in. You can use the edge of an arena or if you have a more experienced horse like this, you can just do it anywhere you like. Make sure you don't overdo the lateral movement, focus on the inside flexion. And now to the diagonal, extend my trot. Oof. Good girl. And collect. Oh. Now, you see, because I have her off my hand and my leg, I only have to think extend and I only have to think collect. Already I have a big mare, big, strong, powerful mare, and she's actually listening to the lightest of my aids. For the lateral movement, I just use a little spur behind the saddle. And we get a nice shoulder in. Very good. And we'll ask for extension again. So, one thing you'll notice at every point, I'm asking her to change, slow down, speed up, go left, go right. I don't just make a track around the outside of the arena. At this point, I'll give her a break. Good girl. So, pat her, and we give her a few minutes. Um, what a lot of people get wrong when they're training horses, they tend to get stuck on this mono pace, kind of around the outside of the ring, do a circle, kind of around the outside of the ring, do another circle, change rein much prefer in my riding to keep asking them for something else. Go faster, go slower, collect, extend, turn left, turn right, lateral movement left, lateral movement right. Um, at the end of the day, my goal is to get the horse off of my aids and get the horse listening to me and focusing on me as much as I possibly can, maybe in the shortest time period because of my business model, sometimes I don't have very long to do it with these horses. Thankfully, with a mare like this, she's already very much predisposed to be nice and easy to ride. She's very agreeable to work with. She picks it up very quickly. Sometimes a lot of other horses don't. It takes them a lot longer. They resist to your aids. Maybe they've had some issues with their training in the past. She comes from a very classical system back in Ireland. She would have been correctly educated her whole life. They never really would have seen anything go wrong for her. And in that is a, a lot, makes my life a lot easier. Okay, we'll start again. Good girl. So already, I really only just picked up the reins and she just went forward for me. So um, that's, 
when my potential buyer comes along, it's going to give them a lot of comfort to think that they only need to look where they want to go and point the horse and the horse is going to go and do its job. Um, so it's very much where I want her. Uh, just slightly forward and then a little collection. And we'll start a little left lead canner. And that transition was less than perfect, so oh, I'm going to ask her to do it again. Collect it slightly. Off my inside line. Good girl. Off it. Good girl. Collect. So now I have a little inside leg supporting, outside hand support. So, uh, better. So it's as simple as just correcting them sometimes when they're a little sloppy on the transition. I'll always revert to my transitions. Little shoulder forward. Good girl. Come on. Good. And now, even this early in the game, I'd like to do a little bit of counter counter. I'm not going to say she'll do it perfectly. I'll at least ask. Start with a little left bend. Right leg is back. Left leg is on the girth and your support. Good girl. Outside seat bone. Come on. I'll keep it a little collected through the turn. Good girl. Okay. Nice. And now I ask for flying change to the right. Good girl. Again, at the end of the day, my goal is not that I have a horse that can continuously go on the wrong lead or do a counter counter continuously. My goal is that I have a horse that will listen to my leg and listen to my hand. And if I ask her to canter on the wrong lead, she will do it. Go through the diagonal. Now I keep a little right leg on, a little right bend. Not pressure though. Take, release. Take, release. Good girl. Outside seat. Well, and just support the counter canter. Support it. There. Line it up. At this point, I ask for a flying change back to the left. And she missed that one. So we're going to do that again. All I do, it was not perfect. It's never going to be perfect, but you can always ask again. Come through the middle. Support, support. A little outside leg on the girth. Inside leg or right leg back a little. Hold it together. Hold it. A little collection in the counter counter always. Change the bend and switch. Voila. So now I have a horse that's nicey. She's not going to go and beat Charlotte Desjardins in a dressage test, but you know what she does? She listens to my leg very nicely. She listens to my hand very nicely. So now I have that. I'm going to ask for a little collection. Oh, oh, oh. Doesn't have to be crazy. And forward. Go, go, go. Extend a little. And I collect. Oh. Oh, good girl. And we can even mix in a small circle. And collect, and collect, and collect. Good. Obviously, this is more difficult for a less fit, less developed horse. If I had my five-star Grand Prix horse out, you'd see much more difference in the collection. This horse doesn't have to do collection to such a high level. She still has to listen and collect and collect and collect. And now move. Go, go, go. And collect. Oh, oh. So that time she pulled through my hand. So I'm going to ask a little more. Hey, hey. In the collection, I'm using a lot more leg to support the canner. And actually, on a horse like this and the extension, I don't use that much leg at all. I make sure she's coming from behind. Soften my hand, give her an outlet. Now I collect. No, I didn't ask for that. Switch back. Thank you. And collect. And collect. Collect. And collect. And collect. Good girl. There. And now allow. Now I just allow. Back it up a little leg. And voila. So now we have a horse that's going. Backwards, forwards, we'll finish with a little bit of 
half pass in the canter. This one's for a more advanced horse, but very nice to get a little bit of lateral movement in the canter at the end and switch. But we'll do the same back the other way. And left leg back. And this is her harder side. Good girl, come on, you can do it. Doesn't have to be perfect, but she has to try. And like, good. And switch. Good girl. So, again, we're not going to sell her as a dressage horse. But the fact that she at least tries to do that half pass is important. And sit up and try. Good girl. Now, time for another little break. Squeeze last here. We want it to stretch down a little bit. Admittedly, it's probably something that this horse struggles with more than anything is to just stretch her head down. She's naturally built very uphill, which makes her very commercial, makes her very easy to ride to fences, and at the end of the day, makes her very suitable for a lot of different types of riders. And it also makes her a little more complex just to stretch down. In order to do it, I'll slow the trot down a little, apply a little hand pressure with the leg, and let go. And no, nope, that didn't do it. So we ask again, a little hand pressure, come on. Squeeze left, squeeze right, and let go. And one more time. She's starting to want to stretch into it. Hold, 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 and just let go. And see if she'll stretch. That's about as good as I can get her there. One more time. Little inside flexion. See if she wants to give it to me. Good. Same the other way. Hey. Good. And nope, that wasn't good enough. Try it again. So she let her hind end go that time. Tripped a little behind. Don't get mad. Don't get anything. You just ask her to do it again. Beautiful. Well done. And now we have a horse warmed up and uh, ready to go on. Maybe do some Cavaletti work. Maybe jump a little exercise. Uh, today we're going to move on and just do two little Cavalettis in a row. Show you something for rideability. Okay, so we have a horse that's nicely warmed up on the flat. Uh, if we've done our job right, she's now listening to our leg properly. We can move her hind end out a little. And the left leg. Move out. Come. Good. Again, I always think of yourself like you're about to get in an airplane that's about to fly. The pilot always checks the left rudder, right rudder wing flaps. I like to just make sure she's listening to my right leg, left leg, left hand, little right hand, good girl, left flexion, right flexion. So none of it has to be rough, none of it has to be hard on the horse, but we just make sure that she's listening. Uh, we're now going to progress to do some Cavaletti work. Um, I like to start a little trot and walk. Just one or two transitions, get her attention back on me, because she did take a break for a minute. Good girl. And say, hey, I'm here. It's time to work. Go. Good girl. And we'll start with a left lead canner. Good girl. Up. And we want to start with enough pace through the turn because. At the beginning, with the Cavalettis, I want to be able to slow down a little bit and collect her as we get close. And just ask a little collection and slightly deep. Good girl. And now go forward. Now go forward. Now go forward. So now she has her own natural cadence. She's carrying herself. We're going close to competition pace. And as we approach, we slow down. Good girl. And switch. 
forward to the turn. Come, come. All right. Approach and slow down. Easy. And now forward again. We do slightly tighter angle. Come, come, come. And now slow down. Good girl. Not that we want the canner to get empty or slow. I say slow down. I really should say collect. Extend a little. And collect, collect, collect. Each time I ask for a little more, a little more, a little more responsiveness. Go, go. Line it out. And collect, collect. Good girl. So now she's listening. She's trusting me to the cavalletti. I can go down the straight line. It's set at a normal six. She's a big, powerful mare. Six strides is not even a challenge. By setting it at a normal distance, not a particularly short distance, you're more emulating your jumping speed. So as you're practicing your cavalettis, you're going at a speed that's closer to what you will go in the ring. Each time I'm changing rein, little tight circle here, and now get her kind of forward a little, forward a little, forward a little, good girl. Because if we practice all the time at a collection, when we go to the ring, we'll last for seven strides this time. We tend to lose control. So, without a lot of effort for me or a lot of support, I just consciously resisted her movement in the canter because she's already warmed up and trained nicely on the flat. She was able to do seven instead of six. Now we do eight. Little collection there. Whoa. And we just hold the collection right to the end. Good mare, stayed nice and straight. Now we want her to go back to the seven again. Very simple exercise. Very simple range, but yet she does it perfectly. And that's her goal. And easily, without too much effort. Normal. Good. Collect a little. You'll notice each time, if I enter on the left, I leave on the right. If I enter on the right, I leave on the left. That is specific for this exercise. And try. And we'll give her a break. And she's done very well. And even now, even at this point, I still focus on the transitions. If they are not good enough, I just simply ask her for it again. I never get mad. I never kick her. I don't have to slap her. I don't have to do anything aggressive. Like I say, no, that was not good enough. Set. And ask for it again. And once I see an improvement, good girl. Because at the end of the day, we're only looking for improvement from these horses. We're never looking for perfection. They're never going to be perfect. We can be perfect in our own mindset and we can be perfect in our own body position. But they will never be perfect. We're only asking for improvement every day. And with a horse like her, she's almost there she's just right where i really want her she's responsive for a potential buyer or a potential client can get on they can they can go and do an exercise like this and they can do six seven eight strides with without a huge amount of effort and without having a huge amount of experience riding because the horse is now listening to my leg she's listening to my hand she's quite agreeable um of course if if we go to jump the meter 60 Grand Prix next week will make the training a little more advanced but right now I think she's off to a good start for a mare that only just got here I'm gonna give her a break we'll do it one more time and we can even mix in a little bend in between the two very simple exercise it's a six strides exactly it's set at 26 meters from one cavaletti to the other um, by setting it at that, like I said earlier, at the distance that's really a competition distance or closer to a competition distance, you tend to work at a pace that is closer to 
what you will use when you're in competition and ultimately what your potential buyer will use when they're trying the horse or if they want to show the horse what they'll use in the ring. Um, so by practicing at that speed at 350 meters per minute or 375 meters per minute, uh, the horse gets more comfortable at that, gets more responsive to you and, and your aids at that speed. If you only ever practice at uh, 250, 225 meters per minute, uh, which is much slower, much more collected, there's no doubt it has its place, but if you constantly practice at that, now you go up to 375, meters per minute, uh, sometimes the control in the horse can be diminished and sometimes the horse doesn't handle your aids quite as well at that higher speed. So I think it's important to yeah, work with some collection work but also work with that forward jumping pace so then when it comes time for an actual competition uh, the horse is there, the horse is used to it and the horse knows what to expect and you know what to expect from the horse. Okay, I'm going to do it one more time. This time I will start at a six strides. I'll do seven, I'll do eight one more time, and then I'll finish with six. What I really am looking for is that at each time the horse gets back to a balance, gets back to a place that where if that Cavaletti were meter 60 high vertical, she could still jump it quite effectively. Um, I want the rideability, I want her responsiveness to the point that I just think what I want, she listens and she does it. So I'll start right around this time. Good girl. You'll notice this time I'm approaching from the right, from this angle, just to change it up a little. Relax, I don't care. Good girl. I'll start with the six. You'll notice her head balance is very good. I personally prefer their heads up a little commercially. It's much easier to have a horse's head up and ask them to bring it down a little and have their head down and try and lift it up. That's hard. There's no way. You just have to learn to live with that. Now seven. Ooh, keep it straight. Um, that's beautiful. Now that vertical could have been 150, 160 high. She did jump it just fine. A little tight here. This is a little bit of collection here in this circle. Now I can extend the canter a little here and this. Oh girl, you got to stay consistent. Now we want eight, so I'm going to cheat a little and slow down here. Easy. Land. And allow. Good girl. Good girl. Now, just for practice sake, I'm going to do it one more time. And six strides. Just so that her eye is back in. Keep the canner, keep the rhythm, keep the rhythm. Outside leg a little. Good girl, there you go. Perfect. Just like that. Keep her nice and straight. Straightness is key in this particular exercise. If we had a bending line or something, it would be different. So now, for me, her training is complete for today. Uh, I have a horse that's nicely engaged, beautifully listening to me. I have literally zero leg on right now. And she's carrying herself. She feels like she's going on autopilot right now, which for me says I've done a good job. She's doing her job right. I'm going to ask for a little shoulder in and canter. Just right hand, right hand, right hand. And then stretch your head down a little. Like I said earlier, the stretching down is the hard part for her. She's not there yet. And drop. Good girl. And then I'm just going to canter left for a second. Good girl. Come on. Up, up, up. And on the left canter, again, ask for a little shoulder in on the circle. Inside like there. Good girl. Left hind. Left hind. Left hind. Left hind. Left hind. Ask. 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 And now let go. And let her stretch a little. Don't give up yet. I'm not done yet. And let her stretch. There. Good girl. Now horse inside. Nice self-carriage. Now I'm going to ask for a transition, but I don't want her to just flop back down into a trot. This is the end of her work. She still has to do it right. Good girl. Very good transition. So uh, the transitions have to stay. You have to stay on top of them. Again, they're never perfect. We're just 
asking for improvement. We want them better and better and better. Now, nice horse, worked well, little inside flexion and hopefully soften my hand. And we're starting to get a nice little stretch down. Again, I'm a couple months off really getting that right. But everything else, I think mean, she does quite well. Oh, well done. Uh, last thing to note, uh, once the, I was happy with where she was, I didn't just pull her up, I worked her down for a minute. I made sure that in that canner she was in full self-carriage, that what I wanted to achieve for the day was achieved and she could still sustain it for one circle, two circles right. I switched to the left, one circle, two circles left. Little in the trot, ask her to stretch. In the walk now, ask her to stretch. I'll always give her at least five plus minutes, five to 10 minutes working her down. Because don't forget, I actually want to compete this mare tomorrow in a meter 40 National Grand Prix. So um, she needs to come out tomorrow feeling good feeling like she was worked correctly today and feeling like she, I worked her down as well. So I warmed her up, I asked for her work and now I'm cooling her off. And I take my time to do it, no rush. It might mean I'm late for my next appointment but I'll have a sound horse tomorrow and I'll have a horse that's ready to jump a nice big Grand Prix. And hopefully do well and look very impressive. And um, that's kind of it. So that's this week's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, then become a member where you can watch hundreds of videos like this, all horse related content, different disciplines, topics, and they're all right there for you to access straight away. So become a member and get full access to the content right now.